some of your family is here, people who love you are here. Yes! Woo! I don't know if you didn't know, we got some people here that came to love on you as well. at 8.30 in the morning at 5656 Fountain Avenue in Los Angeles, California, apartment D. I made a decision that I would return to, this, to the, my childhood religious experience. Okay? Because I grew up. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. I grew up in a Christian home, a Christian environment. Uh, my mother, our mother, this is my brother Craig, my brother Craig, Craig, you need to be up here standing with him. Uh, I grew up in a Christian environment. My mother was the greatest unknown gospel singer in the world. That's my mom. Hallelujah. And when I, I 
rededicated my heart to the Father on that morning, November 19th, 1975. And I didn't exactly use the words of the song that we just sang, but those words were somewhere in my heart. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. I want to be used. I want to do something. Because I've seen ordinary Christianity and I didn't like it and that's why I went to the nightclubs because I was unimpressed with what went on on the platform too many times and I come to realize that that music was, was just in me it was in my heart, I loved it all I loved it all my mother knew that I loved it all my mother knew that someday something would happen in my life and our Heavenly Father would use me for something. In 1944, my father was away at sea. I had two other older brothers. Three more brothers would come later on. But my mother would rub her stomach while she was carrying me. And she prayed this prayer. Father, let this one praise you. Before I was born. And then to go on, now let me tell you this. My mother had a third grade, uh, wait a minute, my, my brother said a third grade education. Because our father had third grade education. My mother had an eighth grade education. But she didn't know Hebrew at all. She didn't know any, uh, anything about the language of Hebrew. She, we come from a, a Baptist, uh, you know, church that, yeah, you know, that kind. And so she gave me the name Ram. Okay. Recently, I looked up the meaning of my name. Ronald in English means advisor to the king. I have never, I never knew that I would meet kings and presidents and diplomats and different people all over the world. Our ministry has gone to, it's 117 nations now, Kurt. 117 different nations. <laughs> she named me Ron. Well, the Ron, the root of that word is from Hebrew. It's actually a Hebrew name. Now, my mother didn't know any Hebrew, but guess what that name means? Music, joy, and song. Mothers, pray for your children. Speak over their lives. I didn't know what I was doing. I started writing these songs. My mother gave me a Bible in 1975. She gave me a Bible. I began to write these songs. And they weren't the regular church songs. In fact, they wouldn't even let me sing them in my church. But my brother... I got in trouble and he went to prison in the Washington State Penitentiary in Walla Walla, Washington. And Kirk was just a teenager then. And Van Waller, myself and Kirk and the drummer, Van Waller, we went up to that penitentiary and be, we began to sing. The chaplain let us sing. I didn't know I had no idea what the Father had given me. I had no idea. <clears throat> but I began to sing these songs. Songs that I'd written. And written these songs just right out of Scripture. Just right out of, just right off the pages of Scripture. And right in front of me, I began to see these, these professional hardcore criminals who were incarcerated, began to fall on their face 
begin to weep and to begin to cry and give their hearts to the Father. I didn't know what was going on. Father, what is this? I don't know about this. They don't do it like this in my church. They don't break down. They don't surrender all. We begin to begin to continue. Very few churches would allow me to sing these songs that I've been writing. Uh, it was just a different age, a different time then. So I decided that well, I'll just sing them wherever I can. So we did that. For eight years, I sang in prisons, and churches, and little schools, and parks, and rehab centers. And we went everywhere, didn't we, Kirk? Uh, rest homes, senior citizens' homes, any place they would let us go. For eight years, most of you don't know this, I, I don't know if I've shared this with too many people, but for eight years, if I had an audience of more than 50 people, I had a great big audience. That was big. If I had an offering more than $50, that was big. But I had determined in my heart, Father, I'm going to praise you. Yes. yes. I'm going to hear from you. Whatever it is you've given me, I'm not exactly sure I know what it is because back in those days, there was no such thing as a praise and worship genre in the music industry. And I didn't even know anybody else who was doing the same thing that, that, that I was doing. I used to take my boys, my youngest son, Sam, <coughs> Sam and Ron, the Cannoli brothers, the two bald head ones there. They, they, <laughs> and I used to take them, and my wife and I would take them, and we would drive all over the Northern California to little churches and to little uh, halfway houses and just anywhere that would open up the door. And then finally, Dick Burnell, Pastor Dick Burnell of Jubilee Christian Center, invited me to come and lead worship at his, at his church. And we just saw an explosion of praise and of worship, and we still didn't know what it was. We still didn't know what it was. Uh, and that's when I first met Israel. He came there with Tim Clement. And man, he blew the roof off the place, man. He was 18 years old or something like that. And he didn't know what he was doing either. <laughs> but we met and we came and we fell asleep some more over in Phoenix because you were in the Phoenix area. Yeah. And uh, I knew then that, that the Father was going to do something big in you. I didn't realize that he was doing something. Great. See, I knew him, I knew him back when. Yeah. <laughs> Don Moore came to our church in 1989. And uh, this was when Integrity Music was just starting. And Don was looking for worship leaders. He sat through a couple of the services there at Jubilee, and then he came and talked to me after the second service. And uh, he said, Ron, I really like what you guys are doing here. I like some of the songs that you have written and the way you sing them. And I would like for you to, would you pray about being one of the worship leaders on our Hosanna Integrity Music Series? I just looked at him and I said, brother, there's some things you don't have to pray about. <laughs> we recorded Lift Him Up. No, we think Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Hallelujah, Jesus is alive. Death has lost its victory and the grave has been denied. Jesus lives forever. That's right, he's alive. 
and that just really took off. That song, Jesus is Alive, and the other one that you were talking about, Be Glorified, Be Glorified. Those two <laughs> That integrity music was still young and inexperienced at the time, and, and they didn't know how to market these projects, this music, in the, in the radio marketplace. And then there was a lady named Vicki Mack who just heard from my stuff. I'd never met her. And she started putting my music on the radio in Detroit and in Washington, D.C., and next thing you know, it was just all over the world. Vicki Mack, by the way, is the uh, manager of Kirk Franklin. And she heard me back in those days. And since then, it's just been from one level to another level to another level to another level to another level. And here we are now, 14 projects later, uh, some plus or minus 5 million units of product, which it would also include intellectual properties like books and training tapes and things of that nature. And we just lost count of how many people we have seen at the altar, how many lives that have been touched and changed. In 2000, in 2007, I finally went to Israel and I began to I wanted the Father, I said, Father, I want you to, to show me something special. And he did. He showed me that I didn't know his name. I'll tell you about that later. Uh, because I'm going to sing this song a little bit later. I'll teach a song to you. But I am determined now in whatever years I have left. Now I'm believing for three score and 10. Okay, I'm believing for that. But I'll take more if he gives them to me. I'm 68 now, I'll be 69 in a few years, a few months. <laughs> well, uh, I got two more minutes. This is, this is my best friend, Tracy Adams. This is Danielle Yard. That's my goddaughter, and that's his, his daughter. And Jason, this is Tracy's son, Kirk Williams. Uh, goes back, he's like my, like my child, like my son. And my baby brother, Craig, he's the sixth of our six, of our six of six sons. He's the baby, he's the one I, our mother loved the most. <laughs> and then uh, my son Tony couldn't come, I, I don't know why. I didn't know you guys were coming. <laughs> but these are my sons, the Canoli brothers, Ronald and Sandra. And I'm so thankful for you guys, man. Thank you, Dad. Uh, I cry. And I really don't care what you think about it. That's <laughs> it. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of all of you. Uh -huh. Yeah, you can do that. I officially present this to you. This is to you. The Legacy Award. Israel Houghton and New Breed present this. Put your glasses on this. Huh? <laughs> Dr. Ron Canoli for your outstanding significance and contribution to worship leaders, musicians, and songwriters all over the world. Come on, child, please, Ron, Dr. Canoli. We're going to hear him sing shortly. And I've got kind of a bit of a surprise up my sleeve. Just, just to honor you. And let us honor you first. Let us say something to you first. Is that all right? I gotta, you got to let me do this. I got the microphone now. <laughs> Just watch this. 
Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I Thank <laughs> you. 
gentlemen, and there's always time for more music and more worship, and we want to hear from Dr. Canoli in a minute. And one, one more time for you to honor him and thank God. For his Remain standing, would you? A couple years ago, three years ago to be exact, we asked Christine Kane to come and speak to us. And there were obviously five of you here, so that's cool. Um, what happened about, oh, I don't know, 45 seconds into her message? The whole atmosphere in this room shifted. And God opened up our hearts in such a way that she just brought such, such a word to us. And we've, uh, we actually immediately asked her to come back and, and it just, she's in such demand and we had a bunch of logistical changes on our part, but she is here tonight and I'm so excited. I want you to open up your heart, put your hands together with somebody who absolutely needs no introduction to this place. From Sydney, Australia, now living in Newport, California. Christine K, come on. Thank you, you can see it. 